usually have some pretty good luck. So go ahead and have those cameras out and ready to go at all times because I can't stop for every single animal. And every animal definitely won't be stopping for us. Also, hold on extra tight to all your loose items because if anything falls out of the truck, I'm not allowed to get up in it no matter how valuable that item is. And just for your safety, see the way you see them at all times. You don't stand up to look at the animals because there will be quite a few holes and bumps in the road. And we don't want anybody to get hurt or fall off. Oh, now, it looks like on the right-hand side on the top of the hill, there's an old hobby. You may think they're related to the zebra because of their white and black striped legs, but they're not. They are the only living known relative of the giraffe. They have skin-covered horns on top of their head called ossicones, just like the giraffe. Also, a really long tongue will use to grab leaves off branches. They can also lick their eyes, ears, and even nose if they have to. Okapis are also extremely shy animals, which is why they weren't discovered until 1901. But until then, they were just believed to be a myth. For another breath of air, they'll just come right back up to the top, take another deep breath, and then sink right back down. Make sure everyone still stays fully and completely seated back there as well. Looks like another one up here on the left. All the white birds on the island here, these are some pink back pelicans. They got that name because the feathers on their back turn a light pink color during mating season. They can also have up to an 8-foot wingspan when they're fully grown. And a group of pelicans, that's called a pod. A pod of pelicans. Now, as we get ready to cross up this rickety bridge here, down to the left are some Nile crocodiles. They can get about 20 feet long, weigh around 500 pounds. They can also easily eat over 200 pounds in just one meal. So they usually eat about once a week. They can also hold their breath completely out of the water. Savannah, the animals will actually work together to shape how the land looks out here. 
Elephants yeah. knock down trees in their way. Yeah. Giraffes, we get our side yeah. of the tree. Yeah. Kids and animals yeah. come along and eat up the grass, keeping everything nice and tidy. Looks like once we get to the bottom of the hill here, first up on the right hand side, there's an unholy cow. Cool. And a big white horn they cow. have may look really heavy, but they're not. They're actually hollow with a honeycomb-like structure inside. That way they can pump their blood there and keep themselves cool. They're also a sign of wealth. The more of them you have, the wealthier you appear to be. They're also sometimes known as the Watusi cattle because they were first domesticated by the Watusi tribe. Now just up ahead here, looks like a giraffe in the distance up ahead. Giraffes are the tallest animals in the world. Reaching heights are about 20 feet fully grown. Newborn giraffe can just around 6 to 7 feet tall. And a group of giraffe, that's called a tower. Make sure little ones are staying fully and completely seated back there as well as for your safety. Another and holy cattle on the right here as well. But look at a great view of these giraffes here. We stay nice and quiet. We can tell the giraffes around here on the reserve are a side giraffe by the rough edges on their brown spots. The articulated giraffe have more of a smooth, clean cut edge on their brown spots. Giraffes also like to sleep standing up at night, which really isn't a problem for them. They only sleep for about 30 minutes every night. Then pretty much spend the rest of their time eating. In fact, giraffes eat so much that they have a dark purple tongue, so it doesn't get sunburned while they do it. That tongue can also be as long as your forearm, so they can easily grab leaves off of the high branches. And on either side of the truck here are some termite mounts. The animals like to use them as scratching hooks because they can be just about as hard as concrete. And eventually over time, they wear down like the one further out to the right. That's when the smaller animals will actually use them like a perch so they can look out over the savannah. can also go about five whole days without drinking a single drop of water. They also like to migrate in really large groups, which is why you usually don't see them alone. Giraffes have the same number of invertebrae in that long neck that we do our back, except theirs are just a lot bigger. The giraffe's heart is also about two feet long, weighs around 25 pounds. They have the highest blood pressure of any mammal, and that's for obvious reasons. <laughs> Looks like just up ahead here, there's an elephant straight up ahead. It'll be on the right hand side in just a moment here. And we can tell this is probably a male elephant because it looks like it's all alone over there. The females usually stay with other females and the babies, while males usually break away from the herd. Sometimes four, some smaller bachelor groups. No, I don't see anyone around, so it's most likely a male. We can also tell he's an African elephant by the shape of his ears. That is the shape of Africa. And their greatest threat is humans due to poaching for their ivory tusks and loss of habitat. 
Over to the left-hand side, some mantle monkeys and the largest and most colorful monkey in the world. Fully grown males can get about 100 pounds. And they have little pouches in their face so they can store food for later. And the more dark and vibrant the colors in the mantle's face are, the more dominant that they are. Inside, a little bit closer up to that male here. But another easy way to tell he's a male, look at the size. The male elephants weigh about 14 to 15,000 pounds or more, whereas the females weigh in anywhere from 8 to 11,000 pounds. We'll head down to the red clay pits, see if we can find the rest of his family down there. They like to hang out around red clay pits because they like to eat red clay more than minerals. It also helps them digest their food. We'll so check down there. Just around the corner and over the bridge here, it's not too far away. Also have quite a few ways they can cool themselves down on a hot day. They can spray water on themselves, throw dirt or mud on their backs, or even fan themselves with their big ears. Because there's a bunch of blood veins on the back side of the elephant's ear. So when they fan themselves, it creates little air pockets behind there to help them cool off. The elephant's trunk is also very powerful. It's a combination of their nose and upper lip. It's over 40,000 muscles on it and can hold around five gallons of water in there. Lesser flamingos have more of that pink coloring on their body. The greater flamingo, they actually get their pink coloring from their diet. No, sweet and brine shrimp that they eat. And a group of flamingos, that's called a flamboyance. And just one flamboyance can have up to 200,000 flamingos in it. ahead of us up here. It's probably what's slowing us down. Some like that, so they can roll around and cool off in the mud. 
that mud also acts as a natural sunblock and bug repellent because rhinos have very sensitive skin. So they keep themselves coated really well in the mud throughout the day. So we'll keep an eye out. We could find some of the rhinos around here. They might also be about the same color as that mud. So you gotta look closely sometimes. Once they've rolled around in the mud and laid down somewhere, they end up looking like some of the big logs around here. So keep a look at them. in the shade there, there's a cheetah. Cheetahs can actually run about 60 miles an hour in just three seconds. They also use their long tail to help them steer while they're running. And they are the largest cats that can purr. They do have non-retractable claws though, so it's not the type of cat you want to make purr. We also think the cheetahs are very successful in terms of how fast they can run. But they're not, they can only do it for short periods of time, and then they have to rest. And a group of cheetahs, that's called a coalition, a coalition of cheetahs. They're also the smallest of all the larger cats here in Africa, only weighing about 100 pounds, and they don't really hunt anything bigger than themselves. We should have to make sure the little ones are staying fully seated back there, or I can't stop for any animals, you may want to keep that in mind. And here at Kofi Rock Formation, it's where lions like to hang out and spend most of their time as they are inactive throughout the day. About 16 to 20 hours of their day is just spent lying about here on the rocks. That's because they do all their hunting and stuff at night because they have six times greater vision than us at night. So if we have any luck of finding some, they'll be up, be up there on the rocks. And if we do find them, they're most likely going to be sleeping right about now because they are nocturnal animals after all. So look out over there. Looks like there's a male lion and two female lions over here to the left. We will get a great view as soon as we get up ahead here in front of them. Rarely ever do you see them awake during the daytime like this. Now the female lions are usually the hunters for the pride, while males tend to stay back and protect the pride. The lion's roar can also be heard from about five to six miles away to Pius. And their tongue feels a lot like sandpaper, so they can easily lick meat right off the bones. Female lions like that typically weigh about three to four hundred pounds, whereas the males weigh anywhere from five to six hundred pounds, with that mane weighing just about forty pounds alone. So if you come on back a little later after sunset for one of our nighttime safaris, you have better luck finding those lions actually doing something. You might even get a chance to catch them roaring because they do not mobilize around nighttime. And it's a pretty amazing thing to catch when they do. Now just up ahead here on the right, there's some water bugs and white rhinos up here. The water bugs have an oily substance on their fur to help keep them warm. And they tend to live near aquatic environments. So they can dive into the water to get away from any predators. And the white rhinos back there are actually much bigger than black rhinos. They can get about 5,000 pounds fully grown. And they have large, wide mouths, so they can easily grasp right off the ground. They can't see too well either, which is why they rely on their really great sense of hearing and smell to help them get around. And a group of rhinos, that's called a crash. A crash of rhinos. And the white rhinos, they also didn't get their name because of their skin. It's actually a grayish color once you see them without all the mud on them. However, they got the name because when they were first discovered, they were called the white rhino. That's V-I-T and white translates to wide. And as you can see, the white rhinos were very wide, so it's basically just a misunderstanding of how they got the name white rhino. Some heat. 
They can also raise their body temperature to almost 115 degrees without even breaking a sweat. That's like almost nine months without drinking any water. Now most of the animals you've seen on the reserve today are either endangered or pretty close to extinction in the wild, which is why they're only found on reserves like this. So if you'd like to help those animals out, save them for future generations. You can donate to the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund at any merchandise location here in the park. I will be dropping you guys off down at the Deer's Worth Books from there. It's just a short walk back to Rural Bay Village or wherever else you're traveling today. If you'd like to check out some more animals, head on over to one of the walking trails here in the park. There's Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail right here in Africa. You're going to see more African animals. There's also the Maharaja Jungle Trek over in Asia. If you'd like to see animals a little more native to Asia, and if you'd ever like to come on back for another safari, you're more than welcome to. No two safaris will ever be exactly the same. The animals always make sure of that. Now we'll be dropping you guys off the bed here momentarily, so if you have any questions of any kind about the animals we saw there today, or questions about the park in general, feel free to shout them out now. Or you can wait till we get back up here at the dock and you come right on up to the front of the truck and ask me then, whichever will be easiest for you, but it looks like there's just a little bit of traffic ahead.